So a couple of months ago I asked Scorpion EXO to send me their best helmet. This is the Scorpion EXO R1 Air Carbon. Now if you're one of those people who've never heard of Scorpion helmets, you probably don't watch a lot of motorcycle racing. Because this EXO R1 Air is the same helmet worn by current world superbike champion Alvaro Batista. Like most Scorpion helmets, this one comes with a fog-free visor, both clear and dark smoke. And if you look in there, I've already installed the pin lock, also included. This helmet also comes with the AirFit cheek pad inflation system. Basically you pump this up and there's like an air chamber that pushes the cheek pads closer to your face, which will give you a tighter and more secure fit. Now Scorpion has already helped me give away a bunch of these helmets, but I still have not ridden in one. And let me show you the issue I'm already having. This top vent is already starting to come apart. I don't know how well you guys can see this, but there's the screw right there and there's the hole right there. Now it can be pretty frustrating to already have a quality control issue with your helmet that you've never actually used. But either way, let's go try it out. All right, welcome back to another riding and talking. <laughs> I'm still trying to get used to this helmet. Having a hard time closing the visor, but I don't know. I don't know if it's actually locked. I'm actually not sure about the placement either. I guess we'll find out if you guys could see. First impressions, this helmet is extremely light. I've already measured it and it's exactly three pounds. This one is a size small. The field of view on this is really wide. The visor seems to open and close fairly easily. So when it does lock, it doesn't feel like it's like a hard lock. Some helmets you really have to press in and lock. This one is just like clicks right in. Very similar to my uh, AGV Pista GPR. I have a lot of room in my ear area. I find that to be really nice and comfortable. Now again, I did mention that this has that uh, air pump in it and I'm a size small. I like my helmets pretty tight and I don't feel like I need to pump it up. Noise wise, look, it's a race helmet at the end of the day. If you're looking for something that's like almost noise free, you're not gonna buy a race helmet. So I don't know if I wanna touch on the noise, but as far as a race helmet goes, it's as quiet as it can be. That said, race helmets are not quiet. This is not quiet <laughs> by any standards, really. I'm not even on the freeway yet. Now the helmet feels like it covers more of the bottom of my chin, which I'm sure that's a good thing. But where I put my GoPro, it's, it's kind of annoying because I like to put my GoPro upside down and I feel like the GoPro is lower than it usually is today. When I turn my head to the side, I can feel resistance in the wind. My AGV Pista GPR, when I turn my head to the side, the resistance is actually, I don't know, it's almost like you can't feel it. What I'm looking for in a helmet is something that kind of cuts through the wind. Now that helmet is a very expensive helmet. That's way over a thousand dollars. And this helmet is in a price point that's a lot more affordable. Rurock just came out with their Track 4.0, which has an MSRP of $650. And the MSRP for this helmet is only $550. And I've heard of people getting it for in the 400s. The liner is a big deal to me. I don't know if you guys know this, but I rode showy helmets for over a decade. And the reason I stopped riding showy helmets is because their liners feel like sandpaper. I had a brand new RF 1400 that I never wore because it was the same exact liner. And when I made the switch to AGV, the main reason was because of that liner. It just feels really great on your face. And taking your helmet off and putting it back on, you're gonna do that a bunch of times, especially when you're out riding. The last thing that you want is for your face to be hurting and for you to be dreading putting on and taking off your helmet. It's really annoying. And what's great about the Scorpions, for some reason, their liners almost feel like AGV's liners. Like it's very, very close. Like it's hard to tell the difference. The AGV liner is a little bit softer than this. The liner in this helmet feels a lot more dense, but hopefully that'll break in. I forget how smoother the Prelia is compared to the FZ07. I've been riding the FZ07 for a couple days now and when I let go of the throttle especially in like first and second gear it just jerks you back so bad. It's like that engine braking is insane. I don't know why they put that much engine braking from the factory. In my opinion even for somebody who's been riding as long as I have it's way too much engine braking. I mean this I have it turned off or like down to the lowest settings and look at that. I love that. I wish you could like turn it down on the FZ07 without a tune. 
the clarity of this dark smoke lens it's really really good like i'm seeing everything in high def right now now i have 2015 vision so i can tell when there's things that are imperfect especially when it comes to like lenses and right now it almost feels like there's nothing in front of my face that's how clear this dark smoke is it's pretty insane the quality that you get for a 500 dollars helmet now of course when you spend 500 bucks on a helmet you're gonna get top tier quality but this is actually like a budget race helmet it's probably one of the cheapest race helmets that you could buy and right now it kind of has that same quality overall of course minus that loose air vent <laughs> The 100 degree field of view vertically is really nice too. And I think that contributes to your huge field of vision. All right, we gotta stop and get gas real quick. 559. Woo! First impressions of this helmet so far, it's pretty nice. See what I'm talking about when I said I mounted this upside down and it's way too low? I think for once I can flip it right side up. I feel like it's making the helmet kind of like tilt forward. Maybe I need to tighten the chin strap a little bit more. This visor mechanism feels flimsy at first, but honestly, it's very, very secure. This little latch or whatever, it's really loose when it's open, but as soon as you close it, I mean, it's still pretty loose, but it, it's it's super secure. Again, this is my only issue so far. Man, this liner feels so nice. It's definitely the selling point for me. The carbon fiber is nice. The fact that it's super lightweight is nice. The vents, they work pretty good, even though there's only like two vents. At least two that open and, that you open and close, but I'm sure like all together is more. But for me, it's that skin to liner contact, man. It feels really good. Let me try pumping it up. Okay, I can feel it tightening against my chin. Oh, that, that actually feels even even better <laughs> I don't know if you're the type of person that likes their helmets like tight like really snug to their head so like when you move your head around the helmet doesn't swivel around your head I love that Woo. that v4 baby that crossplane too sounds good too but there's nothing like a v4 what a sketchy ass dude <laughs> Sketchy dude in a sketchy Trans Am. If that isn't Tacoma, I don't know what is. When you flick the visor down, it just locks. <laughs> I love that. I don't want to like fuss with it locking. I just flick it down and it locks. All right, let's take it on the freeway real quick. See how it feels. I don't know if this light's actually going to catch me. This is the most annoying thing ever, dude. Gee whiz. Oh, it did. Thank you, light. I appreciate you. Oh yeah, here comes the wind noise. <laughs> I'm gonna open the vent. It vents really well on the forehead. But it is, it is very noisy. I'm only doing like 70 miles an hour. It's just as noisy as any other race helmet. It's something I've gotten used to for the last three or four years that I've been riding the AGVP stuff. Do you ever really get used to the noise? No. I think I just get even more deaf. <laughs> I can't wait to try the Covert FX. That's like the uh, budget street helmet that they have out. I think it's like $250 retail. I do have one of those and that helmet actually feels really nice for a $250 helmet. I mean, even just doing 50 miles an hour, you can already hear that freaking wind, man. And I think that comes with any helmet that you try to make as light as possible. Sound deadening is really not a big concern for a race helmet. You definitely want to wear some kind of ear pro when you're rocking a race helmet, especially in the streets, but even more so with the track. Have I ever worn ear pro? Not once. <laughs> What'd you say? One of my favorite views in Tacoma is coming right up. Ah, uh, yeah. Would you look at that, Jim? Woo! My goodness gracious. They had the 4th of July fireworks here. It's, it was beautiful, but this year they had the boat like way the heck out there. Like you could barely see the fireworks. It was stupid. All right, we made it to Creston. Let's go get some coffee. I'm thirsty. Oh, and of course this a-hole is in motorcycle parking. Great. This twat. <laughs> <laughs> purple jeep okay so i just got done with the first ride of the helmet and there's one more thing that i'm concerned about and it's again this rear vent it was peeling up and it looks like it's double stuck tape and i, I did 
end up just kind of pressing it in. So that might be something to look out for in the future. This definitely has the channels inside for people who wear glasses. Or if you like to wear sunglasses while you ride. Again, the ear side has a lot of room, so that's gotta be really nice for like this channel in your ear for, your, for glasses wearing people. So when I have the helmet on, here's where all the points of pressure are. Like right here, and then around like my cheekbone area. So it's almost like, like somebody's got their hand on your face like that, like this. That's kind of how it feels. It's not uncomfortable, but it's definitely something to get used to over time. It could just be me, could be my head shape. This definitely feels like it's more for round head shaped people. Cause I felt like I had a lot of room uh, towards the back of my head. When I did pump up the cheek pads with air, it actually felt a lot better. So maybe this helmet comes a little bit more loose from the factory so that way you can add a little bit of air in it, give you like a more secure fit, which is what I like. There's only two points where you open and close the vents. So there's two air intakes there. And then I think just one air intake up here. That matte carbon fiber is super nice. This does have the pin lock, but this visor itself does not have the tear offs. And I think for a race helmet, they probably do make the face shield with the brace tear offs if that's something you're into. My AGV has one and I've never used them. This wing in the back is, it's really nice. It gives it a little uh, race flavor. I like these D loops. They are made out of titanium, so that's really nice. Of course, it has these emergency latches too. So when you go down and the paramedics come to help you, it's a lot easier to remove. You never want to remove somebody else's helmet in the event of a crash. I'd always leave it up to the person wearing the helmet. And of course, the emergency medical techs. I'm gonna demo that thing that I was talking about. When you flick down the visor, it just locks. That, that's locked in. Okay, so the first time you wear a helmet, it's always a little strange, especially if it's like brand new. Everything is a little bit different from what you're used to. So this is my second actual ride on it. I had a break, gave my face break from all the new pressure points and right now i'm actually loving the helmet i've only been on for like five minutes but it feels great it's super lightweight i'm not hearing any wind noise from like the visor area which is a, like a lot of the cheap helmets you can hear a lot of wind noise from the visor area because they don't seal properly this one is properly sealed and i have the chin vent open there's no air rushing to my eyes some helmets like they're sealed so shitty the air flies <laughs> directly into your eyes it's really annoying especially in those cheaper helmets so i'm curious to see what that 250 dollar covert fx helmet feels like so stay tuned for that review now alpine stars did just announce the super tech r10 which i'm kind of excited about it's alpine stars first motorcycle helmet that's for the streets now they have been making i think moto gp helmets for a little while now so this isn't really like their first time making a motorcycle helmet for street bikes or this type of motorcycle. So I'm curious to see, one, how much it's gonna be. I heard rumors of $1,200. And then two, how well it actually performs. Am I hoping for a quiet helmet? No, looks like a race ready helmet. Am I looking for comfort? Absolutely. I never realized how comfortable race helmets can be until I started wearing them myself. But the price tag for race helmets is well above seven to eight hundred dollars. I think the Shoei X15 is somewhere around eight to nine hundred bucks. That's not a cheap helmet. Now, if you take into account that you should buy a new helmet every five years, if you save a little bit every month, it's actually not that bad. But if it's your first helmet as like an initial purchase, that's a huge investment. For me, a good helmet is anywhere between three to 500 bucks. And the fact that I can get a race helmet that has premium features like carbon fiber, a really wide field of view, and is super lightweight, it's insane to me. Is this helmet perfect? Absolutely not. And I don't think any helmet is really perfect. Yes, there are some quality control issues, but Scorpion does have a five year warranty. And to me, the best part of it all is Scorpion is active on social media. If you send them a message, they actually get back to you. That's pretty much how I reached out to them. Their customer service is really on point. And to have that kind of support from a company that makes motorcycle helmets, it's insane. I'm confident that if you ever have issues with your helmet, 
and you send them a message, they'll resolve it faster than a lot of these other companies. And to be honest, I don't even think it matters where you buy the helmet from. Is Scorpion my favorite motorcycle helmet? No, they're not perfect. I personally have a little bit more to spend on a motorcycle helmet. And to be honest, this doesn't fit me as well as my AGV Pista GPR. Now, I am the type of person who likes to have multiple helmets to switch between. So these Scorpion helmets that they gave me aren't going to go to waste. I am going to use them for things like putting around town, making my moto vlogs. They sent me a dirt one. They sent me an ADV one that I'm going to use with my dirt bike and slash or supermoto whenever I decide to build that bike up. <laughs> so yeah, for somebody like me who wants a high quality helmet but doesn't want to spend that premium price two times just for a spare helmet, Scorpion's definitely going to be my go-to. Now, if you're on a budget and you're a value-based buyer, there's really no other competition. Scorpion has the best bang for your buck. They always have. It's the reason they've won a ton of awards and it's the reason that company is growing like it is. I can only see them making higher quality helmets over the years and never really changing their price points. Scorpion, thank you guys for sending me the helmets. I love them. I'm not getting paid for this video. Again, I asked them for these helmets for me to review. They're not paying for my opinion because you guys already know a double moto can't be bought. I love you guys. I just realized I didn't do an appreciation stop. Look at this beautiful Aprilia RSV4. Oh yeah. Y'all want to start it? Go ahead, bro. The key's in there. <laughs> Fucking left it in there again. <laughs> I just stopped by Ace Hardware. Oh my god. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. One thing that's good about the FZ07, I can touch the ground. <laughs>